morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this hour, a man is hit by a car near a park on the city's west side. Details on his condition coming up. Plus, several world leaders attend the ceremony of Barbados becoming a republic for the first time in history. Another chilly start to our day, right on track with the forecast. We're mid-40s here in town. We'll talk to Mike in a moment. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday, last day of the month, November 30th. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the beautiful weather yesterday afternoon. Yeah, it was very, very nice today. We've just got to get through the next couple hours, Mike, and then we can shave this beard <laughs> off. <laughs> yes, so we look like a bunch of uh, grizzled old submariners no. here, like we've been at sea for six months. Very distinguished, very nice. I was telling my wife last night, I was like, say goodbye to it, because, you know, she, oh, no, keep it. Oh, yeah. So you look like the captain of, like, a British frigate or something. <laughs> the Gordon's Fisherman. The Gordon's anyway, Fisherman. Oh, my um, <clears throat> yeah, it is kind of chilly out there this morning, and yesterday was absolutely beautiful. Today is going to be pretty much a continuation of that. At almost the same temperature profile up uh, just a couple of degrees and we've got some clear skies out there right now. 46 here in town, 42 Randolph, and some 30s out in portions of the hill country. So not quite as chilly. Of course, yesterday we did hit freezing in some locations, northern Bear County and up into portions of the hill country. And we do have a little bit of a breeze out there this morning. So that adds just that little nip to some of these temperatures. 50, 43 is what it feels like here in town, Port SA. And uh, not everybody has a wind chill to deal with as of right now. There is still some fog once again along the coastal plain. Just watch out if some of that tries to kind of work its way a little bit further inland throughout the course of the morning because even though the air is very dry relative to the temperature, there's a lot of humidity and with those light winds out there, we might see some fog in some low lying areas. Mold is on the low side and throughout the rest of today, we may drop down another couple of notches here and there. Still jacket weather and then you won't need it by this afternoon. 73 degrees. All right, new month and well, it's going to bring some changes with the weather. It's not really going to feel off a whole heck of a lot like December, maybe some rain chances as well. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Michael, thank you very much. New this morning, a San Antonio police say a man was hurt after he was hit by someone driving a car on the city's west head last night. It happened around 6 p.m. in the 5800 block of West Commerce near Southwest 36th Street near Monterey Park. San Antonio police say the vehicle was traveling west on Commerce when a 65-year-old pedestrian stepped out into the road and was hit. He was taken to a hospital with life-threatening injuries. SAPD says the driver of the vehicle was not intoxicated and is cooperating with officers. No charges are expected to be filed. The Bear County Sheriff's Office confirming that a detention cadet died during a training exercise. They say the 59-year-old cadet had a medical episode and was pronounced dead late yesterday afternoon. The Sheriff's Office says the cadet had trouble breathing and was allowed to rest, but his condition then started to get worse. He was taken to the hospital, but did not survive. The name of the cadet has not been released at this time. In your morning headlines, Japan now the latest country to confirm its first case of the new Omicron coronavirus variant. Meanwhile, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell is set to testify today about what could happen if the Omicron variant prolongs the pandemic. Powell says it could keep prices rising, hurt job growth, and make the supply chain crisis worse. In his prepared testimony, Powell notes the economy took a blow in the summer thanks to Delta variant. But as infections fell throughout the fall, the economy picked up steam. The job market rebounded and the unemployment rate fell to the lowest rate since May of 2020. However, health officials say it may take weeks to know whether Omicron is more contagious, causes more severe disease or evades vaccines. In Washington, Senate Republicans blocked the annual defense bill from advancing in a vote last night. They are demanding more amendment votes for the National Defense Authorization Act. The vote fell short of the 60 votes needed to advance it, with a handful of Democrats also voting no. Texas Republican Senator John Cornyn says he expects the blocked vote to lead to a fresh agreement between the parties. Cornyn predicted that they could finish the defense bill this week if given a, quote, reasonable opportunity to offer amendments. Pomp and circumstance on display overnight during a ceremony where Prince Charles made history on the island of Barbados. The nation now replacing Queen Elizabeth with a president. ABC's Christine Sloan has the details. Overnight, Prince Charles in Barbados to mark the island's break from Great Britain, ties which date back to the 1600s. As your constitutional status changes, 
it was important to me that I should join you to reaffirm those things which do not change. For example, that the close and trusted partnership between Barbados and the United Kingdom as vital members of the Commonwealth. The Caribbean nation removing Queen Elizabeth as its head of state to become a republic. The prince commemorating this historic moment, but also apologizing for the island's painful past. From the darkest days of our past and the appalling atrocity of slavery, which forever stains our history, the people of this island forged their path with extraordinary fortitude. Singer Rihanna also honored. She was born and raised in Barbados. That Ambassador Robin Rihanna Fenty shall have conferred upon her the order of national hero of Barbados. May you continue to shine like a diamond. The ceremony not without controversy. Critics saying the royal family should have played no part in the commemoration. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. 436, about 46 degrees. And so ahead, if you're trying to get rid of that cable or satellite bill, we're checking out which TV antennas work the best right now. And go Spurs go, San Antonio finally on a win streak. We have highlights of last night's game against the Wizards next. We'll take it. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting off in the 40s, kind of chilly out there. Don't forget that jacket, but it's looking like another nice day out there. We'll be right back. Just about 440, our San Antonio Spurs finally on a win streak after taking on the Washington Wizards at home last night. San Antonio's defense helped ignite the offense in the first quarter. Derek White coming up with the steal gets it to DeJounte Murray. Back to Keldon Johnson for the one-handed jam. White ended up with a season-high 24 points. Murray added 22 and 10 rebounds. That helped the Spurs defeat the Wizards 116-99. San Antonio had not won back-to-back -back games since a stretch in late April when they won three straight. Spurs saw six players score in double figures and had a season-high 72 points in the paint while the Wizards had 56. Spurs center Jakob Pertl had 14 points, 11 rebounds, and two blocks, becoming the first player from the 2016 NBA draft with 2,000 career rebounds and 400 career blocks. I mean, we were getting stops, so we were really getting on transition, pushing it. Um, Finding open guys. I mean, I think we did a good job of finding Brand a couple of times, and um, KJ pushed it and attacked what he does. So I mean, um, it all started with getting stops and then getting on transition, and then in the half court, just finding open guys and, and knocking down and making the right play. San Antonio has won back-to-back -back games 881 times under Coach Pop since 1996. That's the most of any coach in league history. Next up, Spurs travel to Portland to take on the Trailblazers. Thursday's game set for 9 p.m. at the Moda Center. Yeah, we're still talking high school football. Brennan Bears head to the state high school quarterfinals after they were able to remain undefeated and number one in 12's top 12's after outscoring Austin Bowie 59-36 to advance to the 6A Region 4 Division 1 championship game against Lake Travis. Now they'll put their 13-0 record on the line against the Cavaliers Saturday at 2 p.m. in Dripping Springs. It's very exciting, you know. Uh, we came a long way throughout the whole year. We just kept getting better, kept, you know, executing each week, and it's very exciting to go against Lake Travis. They're a great team, you know. They have a, a legacy of greatness there, you know. They had a couple cha state championships. I know uh, Baker Mayfield came from there, so it's just kind of, you know, we got to match their intensity, you know, and we got to prove to them that, you know, we're not someone to overlook. USA Roadrunners preparing for their biggest football game of the year when they host Western Kentucky for the Conference USA Championship Friday night at the Alamo Dome. Roadrunners coming off their worst performance and their only loss of the season when they were blown out by North Texas in Denton on Saturday. Final was 45-23. Now they face Western Kentucky, the same team they beat in week, week six on the road, 52-46. I've seen it where it's cost you two games in a row, and I've seen it where you fight back and you play better. It's just a matter of our mindset. It really is. It's a great question. Is North Texas going to beat us twice? I'll let you know Friday at 10. Is this going to be what makes us win a conference championship? I'll let you know Friday at 10. I, I, I don't know if I knew 
you know, obviously nobody else thinks so because we started out a favorite and we're already an underdog, so America believes we're done. And here's what he's talking about. Roadrunners used to be two point favorites. They're now one and a half point underdogs. The Conference USA Championship game against the Hilltoppers starts at 6 p.m. Friday night over at the Alamo Dome. Should be a heck of a game. Yes, we're wishing them the best of luck. Time now, 442 and 46 degrees. If you're looking to cut the cord, we're checking out your best options for TV antennas that can save you money. Next, uh, first look at what comes next in the high stakes fraud trial of Elizabeth Holmes. And welcome back. It is 445. Elizabeth Holmes testified at her fraud trial on Monday that she was a victim of sexual abuse when she was a student at Stanford. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an emotional day of testimony from Elizabeth Holmes. Telling a packed courtroom she was raped while at Stanford and decided to drop out to pour herself into building Theranos. Also alleging her former boyfriend and the COO of her company, Ramesh Sunny Balwani, abused her physically, emotionally, and verbally. Allegations he has firmly denied. The allegations are going to have no bearing on the trial because although it may be something that she was subject to, that doesn't speak to the actual charges of fraud and the intent that is required for fraud because that is a measure of whether or not she knew she was making false statements about the company at the time. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what's to come in this high stakes trial. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Well, TV antennas have come a long way over the years with more people dropping cable to cut expenses. Antennas are still popular. But which one should you buy? 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has information that can help. Chris Patterson cut the cord years ago. He uses an antenna to watch Sunday sports and local news. His favorite perk? There's no monthly fees and you don't have to have any sort of contract with a cable company or any other company. Consumer Reports tested indoor antennas of different shapes and sizes in both the city and the suburbs. In our tests, most models were able to receive dozens of free over-the-air channels. One that worked well is the WineGuard Flat Wave Amped. It's super thin for mounting on a wall or window. Their tests also found little correlation between price and performance. This budget model from Naxa has the classic rabbit ears and loop design, but also has modern features. No matter which antenna you choose, several factors impact the number of channels you get. Where you place your antenna can be really important. We suggest placing it as high as you can and preferably close to a window. Where you live and buildings and trees can also impact reception. You may need to try several models to find what works for you, so shop where you can easily return or exchange. You should also rescan every month or so because you might pick up new stations you couldn't get before. As for Chris, besides saving money, he found his antenna came in handy. A couple years ago when there was a major storm and the cable went out in town for a couple days, if you had an antenna, you could still watch TV. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. That's a good backup plan. That's true, mm -hmm. and you just never know. Mike is here with a look at uh, more of our forecasts as we wrap up November. I, I, yeah, there it goes. It's hard to believe. Do you have to put like clumps of foil on the antenna? Like sometimes you used to play back ones. Based on experience, that I can did. sometimes <laughs> help, can it? Anyway, uh, yeah, it's it's already the, the end of November, technically the end of tropical season as well. Obviously, you haven't had anything in a while out there in the, the tropics. Gorgeous day for a walk yesterday. Yeah, it was beautiful. And it was interesting, you know, we started off very cold, got down to 40 yesterday and even by mid morning it was like well, who needs a jacket and it's going to be that situation again today so grab a coat this morning and you definitely won't need it by later on so looking off to the west right there and uh nice view we do have a lot of clear skies right now wind chill temperatures yeah there's not much of a breeze out there but with temperatures down in the 40s and even some 30s in much of the area wind chill is at 43 here in town same thing port sa is what it feels like 40 at ball verde so we are not as cold as yesterday morning and that is really going to be the trend as we go into the first couple of days of December. We're, uh, yeah, we'll still be jacket weather in the mornings, but uh, it's going to be much, much warmer. As a matter of fact, by Friday, Thursday, Friday, it's going to be about 20 degrees warmer than what it was yesterday morning to start off. Also, we do have some moisture aloft in the atmosphere. 
this kind of grayish shade here on the water vapor imagery. So uh, yeah, it's going to be a good looking day today, but we'll have kind of that milky shade to the sky. Maybe a few high wispy clouds hanging around here and there. Still a, a really good looking day today though. And as far as the humidity, it is low this morning and it's going to still stay fairly comfortable throughout the afternoon, but these numbers are going to continue to go up. And so by tomorrow morning, it's going to be dew point temperatures in the mid fifties. And this is tied very closely to the low temperatures because you can't drop down below what these dew points are. So low temperatures will be staying in the 50s tomorrow and then the 60s by the end of the week. And these uh, numbers just continue. Dew point temperatures continue to go up. Therefore, the humidity continues to go up and that's going to lead to a lot of clouds in the morning and then a bit more sunshine in the afternoon, but we'll have more clouds each and every day as the week rolls on. Satellite picture, couple of clouds that were showing up over the past 12 hours, maybe one or two of them out there this morning. That's about it. And looking just at this view, yeah, there's a lot up to the north of us, but nothing really upstream. However, see this little bit of circulation right there over there in the Pacific Ocean. It's another one of those lows which are going to kind of move down, hang around off the uh, coast of the Baja of California and then send a lot of moisture in our direction. So that is going to really start to be the case by uh, about Wednesday, Thursday, and then going in toward the weekend, more clouds around here, and then it's going to give us a chance for some rain. I wouldn't get really excited about rain chances, but just a few of them here and there. So 68 today at noon, mostly sunny skies and a high temperature. We are going to make it up to 73. The noon temperature is the normal high, so we are going to be about five above normal, and that is going to be the trend on both the low and the high end of things. Going in through the rest of the week, we stay in the 50s, mid 50s in the next couple of mornings, and then low 60s and mid and upper 70s. Again, I've got those rain graphics on there for Friday through the weekend and Monday. It's 20% chance at best, so very few and far between, just one or two of them. So if you've got some outdoor plans, I wouldn't change them, but yeah, that's kind of undecemberish. ish mm -hmm. Start off December. Undecemberish. Yes. Yes. I almost wore my blue snowman tie today, so we almost did it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, you would have been matching. Yep. No, it'll happen again. It, it happens from time to time. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Right now, 452, about 46 degrees. And still ahead on DMSA Adele, once again at the top of the Billboard charts. Plus, hear from the creators of Disney's newest movie, Encanto. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three this morning, 495, Fireball 0. Daily phone number 6943, Fireball 6. Cash 5, 4, 6, 9, 12, 13, and your Texas two step 1, 22, 26, 29, bonus ball 25, and your Powerball numbers 18, 26, 28, 38, 47, Powerball 17, Power Play 2. Good luck. Five Till, the creators of Disney's latest film, talk about the movie's main characters, plus Adele's new album is getting heaps of praise. For the latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Where did the magic powers of Encanto come from? Family and culture. The animated Disney film topped the box office over the holiday weekend, and I talked to co-writer and co-director Sharice Castro-Smith about the magical, magical family she helped create, and why some of the characters, like the mom, Julieta, had powers we've never seen before. We knew that we wanted to have someone who healed through food, and that just immediately was like clearly the nurturer. You know, it's kind of like based on my own mom, and I think a lot of people's moms make food that like really can cure whatever ailment. Them. Encanto could top the box office again this weekend. It's only in theaters. Adele feeling the love for her new album, 30. It debuts atop the Billboard 200 album chart with the best sales plus streaming week of the year, taking that prize from Drake's Certified Lover Boy. 30 also had the best straight sales week of the year, taking that away from Taylor Swift's Red re release. And Adele's first single from the album, Easy On Me, returns to number one on the Billboard Hot 100 Singles Chart, its fifth week on top. Tom Holland won't be hanging up his spider suit anytime soon. Spider-Man producer Amy Pascal tells Fandango that more Spider-Man movies starring Holland will be coming after the next one. Spider-Man No Way Home debut next month. And happy birthday to Kaylee Cuoco, the flight attendant and Big Bang Theory star is 36 today while actor and director Ben Stiller is 56. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles.
457, 46 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, why President Biden says he is not considering any widespread U.S. lockdown following recent news of the latest COVID variant. Which apps were the most popular on Google Play this year? We'll tell you which ones topped the list coming up in your morning Tech Bites. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide. Pretty quiet there at 1604. And there's a look at Loop 410 at Bandera Road. Stephen Cabasas just walked in the room. We'll be checking in with him in just a minute. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, a person is shot near a gas station on the east side overnight. We have details. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The new COVID-19 variant Omicron is spreading across the globe. What the president and top health officials are urging from Americans. Coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it's chilly out there. It's 46 degrees. Grab that jacket. But later on, nice temperatures, I think. Several buildings downtown lit up in blue and orange for the UTSA Roadrunners as they head into their championship game on Friday night. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, November 30th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a great Monday. The weather certainly helped out. Oh, it did. And Mike says this is probably the last of the chilly mornings for a little while. Yeah, it's still going to be jacket weather the rest of the week, but it's not going to be as cold. Yesterday, of course, we did dip down to 40 and this morning we'll still maybe drop down another couple of degrees here, but we'll stay up a few notches compared to uh, yesterday. 45 though, I mean, that's still down close to a normal low temperature. And once again, later on today, just to kind of jump to the end of the book here. It's going to be fantastic. We'll be up in the uh, low 70s. We hit 70 yesterday, plenty of sunshine and yeah, another really comfortable day. And that's also going to be changing a little bit because we will start to see some more humidity coming in here as we go through. Well, really to start off the month of November, the aquifer dropped down two tenths of a foot yesterday and the allergens. We do have just low amounts of mold out there. Little bit of a breeze this morning, which means we've got just a little bit of a wind chill here and there. Feels like a 43 in town, a 38 up the road in Kerrville and 40 in Balverde. So not as cold as yesterday. Still, obviously, jacket weather also almost identical to yesterday is the fact that right here along the coastal plain, we've got a lot of very thick fog. Gonzales is now down to one mile visibility, so just got to kind of keep an eye out with the relatively high humidity with the dew points and temperatures close to each other and then not much of a breeze out there. We just have to watch out for some of this to try and maybe scooch its way in a little bit further to the west throughout the course of the next couple of hours. So mostly clear other than some fog along the coastal plain, mostly clear and very chilly and then rest of the day, plenty of sunshine and very warm. Like I said, getting up into the low 70s, about to five degrees above normal and then midweek really tomorrow and Thursday, more clouds and it is going to be warmer. Then we get into the end of the week, Friday and through the weekend. Very warm, upper 70s, more humidity out there. I, it's not going to be a big rain event, but a couple of showers here and there to, over the weekend. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. What's cooking? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, right now we have some nice roads that drivers can expect if they plan on heading out the door in the next few moments. Uh, given that it is a little bit after five, this is you pretty normal as we take a look around town. We're seeing a lot of empty roads out there. Here is US 281 South, 281 at Grayson. Again, just a few folks getting their morning started early with us. It's always a great time to grab that cup of coffee and get that day started. Started. But let's go ahead and take you to the map because uh, we do have a few stalls just to mention here. Loop 410 northbound at I-35. This one was detected a little bit earlier this morning. and We see that trend continue a little bit further up. Let's take a jump right over here to Loop 1604 westbound at Lookout Road. Again, another stalled vehicle. So that seems to be the trending issue at this hour. But of course, that tends to change when we start to see more people out on the roadways. Take a wider look at the map. This is what you can expect. Again, if you are heading out the door in the next few minutes, lots of green on the screen. It's what we like to see for Tuesday traffic. Let's go ahead and check out those inbound times if you plan on heading to San Antonio in the next few moments. Right now, if you are coming in from Bernie on I-10, we have 25 minutes at this hour, 25 from 281 and Bolverde, and we are looking at 26 minutes on 35 coming in from New Braunfels. Let's take one last look around town, 1604 Culebra, 1604 at Spurs Ranch Road. Again, pretty quiet roads. If it stays this quiet, we will talk gas prices coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie.
Thank you, sir. New this morning, San Antonio police say they're investigating a shooting that happened on the city's east side overnight. Officers responded to a gas station in the 1100 block of AT&T Center Parkway around 11 o'clock last night. They found a person with a gunshot wound to the shoulder. That person was taken to a hospital in stable condition. SAPD says the shooting actually happened on Belgium, just around the corner from the gas station where the victim drove to call for help. SAPD says the suspect also drove away from the scene and so far there's no word on an arrest or what led up to the shooting. Police in Texas and Oklahoma are looking for a homicide suspect in San Antonio who may be linked to a missing woman from Oklahoma. Now back in 2018, police accused Francisco Velasquez of shooting and killing a man at a restaurant on the southwest side. He was supposed to be in court in August, but it's not clear what happened that day or if he even showed up. Now he's in trouble for a separate case. Investigators in Oklahoma say he dated challenged Diane Treti to Padilla, who's now missing. Now she left work 24 days ago in Wayne, Oklahoma. No one has seen her since. Investigators in Oklahoma say Velasquez also goes by the name Mike Paco Mendoza. They say he's armed and dangerous. If you know where he is, you're asked to call 911. President Biden now pushing for all adults and eligible children to get vaccines and booster shots. It's in response to the new COVID-19 Omicron variant. Now several countries are already implementing travel bans. ABC's M. Wynn has more from Washington. This morning, rising urgency as scientists race to learn more about the new COVID-19 variant Omicron and how dangerous it might be. If people are vaccinated and wear their masks, there's no need for the lockdown. This variant is a cause for concern, not a cause for panic. The U.S., along with more than a dozen other countries, have put travel restrictions in place for non-citizens. So far, about 200 cases have been confirmed across the globe and are steadily increasing. Still no confirmed cases here in the U.S., but Dr. Fauci suggests the strain could already be here, telling CNN we have to step up vaccinations. Vaccination is going to be the solution to this, whether it's the Delta variant or whether it's the Omicron variant. Vaccination is going to be the solution. This, as hospitalizations across the country have climbed more than 20% since the start of the month. Doctors say the variant's high number of mutations could make it more transmissible with an increased risk of reinfection. I'm worried that the normal patients that we would usually get to take care of around this time aren't going to make it here because the beds are being taken by the month long or more COVID stays. Vaccine manufacturers say they're ready to update the vaccine formulas to reflect new protections against Omicron if needed. Health experts are sticking by the current vaccines for now. I think it will provide at least a certain amount of protection, maybe a lot of protection, we don't know yet. President Biden is calling on all nations attending the World Trade Organization meeting next week to waive intellectual property protections for COVID vaccines like the U.S. so they can be manufactured globally. And when ABC News, Washington. And when it comes to the Omicron variant here at home, the advice from local health experts is to stay calm. The emergence of the new variant brings a lot of questions about our current vaccines, and right now doctors do not have all the answers. Dr. Jason Bowling with the University Health System described these variants as keys that are changing and trying to in infiltrate the current barriers of protection that we already have. Basically, it's changing its key so it can work around our treatments and still infect cells. So things that we've been using to try and block it from entering the door, so to speak, it's trying to work its way around by creating a new key. And Dr. Bowling says vaccines are still our best line of defense. Local pharmacies as well as Metro Health continue to offer the COVID-19 vaccine and booster shots. 508, about 47 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you about Twitter's new CEO now that Jack Dorsey announced he is stepping down. And next, why the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center needs your help now more than ever. Taking a look outside with live cam. Yes, it's chilly out there right now, but can't complain because we'll reach some nice temperatures later on. We'll be right back. When it comes to our local blood supply, right now, local leaders say there's only a two and a half day supply of blood at the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. 
In April of 2020, the FDA eased donor restrictions to expand the pool of people who are able to donate. But local officials say, unfortunately, that did not lead to an influx of donors coming to give. According to Adrian Mendoza, the vice president of blood operations, the safety of blood testing has improved significantly, so further restrictions should be lifted. The risk of not having blood uh, versus, you know, um, uh, the changing criteria just to ease those those criteria so people can give more. I think we're we're at that point where we need to lift further some of those requirements and allow more donors to give. Other blood centers are asking hospitals to limit voluntary surgeries to help with the blood supply. We aren't at that point yet, but Mendoza says if things get worse, that is possibly a next step. And time now, it's 513 and 47 degrees out there. So head on GMSA. Today, we'll tell you about Apple's new multi-device wireless charger that can handle three devices all at the same time. Plus, Google naming its top apps of 2021. Take the time to melt into your holiday moments with Lindor. <laughs> Irresistibly smooth chocolate from the Lindt Master Chocolatier. Infused with nourishing serum and almond oil, Nivea Essentially Enriched Lotion helps lock in goodness for smooth, luminous skin so you can go from morning until happy hour with this lady. For goodness that keeps going, nourish on with Nivea. Some people have joint pain, plus have high blood pressure. They may not be able to take just anything for pain. That's why doctors recommend Tylenol. It won't raise blood pressure the way that Advil, Aleve, or Motrin sometimes can. For trusted relief, trust Tylenol. Welcome back, 516. Twitter has a new CEO now that Jack Dorsey has announced he's stepping down. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Twitter CEO discussing his resignation. Jack Dorsey says he wasn't pushed out after announcing he's stepping down as CEO of Twitter, which he co-founded. Twitter's chief technology officer is taking over as CEO. A wireless charger that can handle multiple devices at the same time is reportedly in the works at Apple, a replacement for the company's failed air power charging mat. Bloomberg says Apple is also looking to develop technology for devices to charge each other, like using your iPhone to charge your AirPods. Finally, Google is out with its annual list of the best apps for the past year. The top honor goes to Balance, which is an app designed to help with meditation and sleep. The top game app was Pokemon Unite. It's a multiplayer battle game where your favorite Pokemon characters fight it out. My favorite, the ABC News Live app, but that's just me. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. You know who else could pull off that look? Kind of the tweed, sport mm. coat, uh, black turtleneck? Stephen Cavazzo. Oh, oh yeah, you yeah. look very nice. Well, if it so? gets as cold as it did last February, okay. again, this, yes. you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, we well, I, I, uh, you know, I don't know if I could pull off the turtleneck. I couldn't pull off the stash this this uh, this no shave November, but I could give it a well, try. One, yes, one does not negate the other. I mean, <laughs> it's worth a shot, right? I'll try it out. Okay. All at right. the advice of Mark and Steph. Well, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the roadways. 281 at Grayson. It's still pretty empty out over there. So as you can see right now, US 90 and Nogalitos, traffic has been pretty light throughout the morning. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, that's always expected, at least a little bit after five. We know a lot of people are still maybe at home we have that cup of coffee, but here's what you can expect right now. If you're going to be heading out maybe a little later on this morning, we still have those stalls off Loop 410 northbound at I-35 and taking a jump up over here. Loop 1604 westbound at Lookout Road, so make sure you're checking those vehicles before you get your day started. Wider look the map does show that it is still pretty much green on the screen, but let's take you to those gas prices. We, were, we forgot to mention that to you yesterday, but here's what AAA is reporting as of today. Right now, that average gas price in Bear County is 281 around the state. We're looking at 297. Now, the country we're looking at 339, so we saw a little bit of a relief here. According to AAA, that's a penny down from last week, so some relief. But again, we're going to continue to watch those gas prices as well as these roadways. But for right now, they're looking pretty nice and quiet, guys. And it's also the last day of No Shave November, so these are coming off a pretty yeah, successful year. Day. And coming up, what, later, next half hour? Yeah. The update? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're going to have an update. Uh, lots of money raised.
Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. And I've already nominated Dylan Collier's <laughs> Beard of the Year. Beard, Beard of the, the year. year. Oh my God, yeah, he needs his own graphic. He looks like, uh, <laughs> what was it? Is it, who's on the brawny paper towel ad? Is that like a lumberjack, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> Dylan, I think Dylan wins it. He's, he's, he's brawny by a mile. Brawny by a mile. Like Jeremiah Johnson or something, remember that movie? Way yeah, back, back in the old days. Something, something like that. Yeah. So something. Beautiful picture out there, and everybody gonna join in and sing it? Here comes the sun. No, 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 no. Oh, was never mind. I did yeah. uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody participated, yeah. though. I know, I know. I'm Almost saying, but yeah. yeah. Who's over there on prompter? Ralph. Ralph. We didn't hear you. Next half hour, <laughs> you need to raise your game, sir. <laughs> beautiful. We are going to have a lot of uh, beautiful sunshine this morning, and don't have much of any clouds out there. We might see a, a few high wispy clouds or that kind of milky shade of the sky later on today because there is some moisture in the mid upper levels of the atmosphere, but it's still going to be a beautiful day, uh, almost a, a exact repeat of yesterday. 43 is what it feels like here in town. We've got a little bit of a breeze out there. 38 right now is the wind chill at Randolph and 37 up in Kerrville. So yes, it is cold again, not quite as cold as yesterday. And this is why I was talking about how there may be a little bit of a milky shade of the sky with some of this moisture upstairs in the atmosphere. Not a lot of it, but again, just a couple of, uh, you know, wispy clouds here and there. Humidity, which is quite low right now, is definitely going to start to come back into the picture, really starting overnight tonight. And so low temperatures, instead of being down in the 40s, are only going to be staying in the 50s because we will have more moisture in the atmosphere. And that's going to continue as we go on into the weekend. And yeah, you get above 60, you sort of start to feel it. So it does look like it's going to be somewhat on the muggy side this weekend. But there will be at least one or two showers around the area. Not a lot of rain, but you know, just a, a little bit. All right, here's what's going to be going on for the, the rest of the week. There's nothing really showing up as of right now. This is the water vapor imagery and the national uh, view, and it's almost like an I'd like to look at this as like an X-ray, if you will, of the atmosphere, because this really doesn't show up too well in the satellite picture. <clears throat> Excuse me. But there is this low, which is out here in the Pacific Ocean, similar to what we had uh, last week when we had all that moisture kind of getting pumped on in here. This thing is going to be working its way down, parking right about around the, the Baja of California, and it's just going to sort of sit there and throw some upper level moisture in our direction. So that's going to help with the cloud cover. We'll have a lot of uh, starting really tomorrow and then the rest of the week, a lot of morning clouds and then some sunshine in the afternoon through Thursday and then more clouds around on Friday and a couple of showers that low out there is going to throw some energy in our direction. So again, one or two showers, as I always say, this computer model, you know, does it with the broad brush here, so it's not going to be raining everywhere, and rain chances are, are actually quite small going uh, starting Friday going in through the weekend, just one or two of them here and there, plenty of clouds hanging around, and that'll probably be the case on Sunday and maybe into Monday as well. It looks like there is going to be somewhat of a front that will try and slide through here and at least knock temperatures down somewhat on Monday. And again, yeah, there's going to be a chance for some rain. No, it's not going to be a good chance of rain as we go into the weekend. So today, 68 degrees at noon, already pretty much at the normal high temperature. A lot of wispy clouds out there. Some, like I said, the milky shade of the sky and then 73 for a high temperature, about five above normal. Good looking day. Uh, then tomorrow, a lot of clouds that start off mid 50s and then we make it up into the mid 70s. So instead of a 40 or excuse me, instead of a 30 degree swing in temperatures, like was the case yesterday, like what will be the case today, more humidity, not that big difference, only about mm, 20 to 15 degrees going on into the week, more clouds by the weekend and very warm temperatures. A lot of folks are going to be seeing some even low 80s by the end of the week and the weekend. Hmm. Interesting for yeah. December. Yeah. I was going to say, and it's like, this is December? That's how we start December in Texas style. Yep. All right, thank you, Mike. Right now, 523, about 47 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, Channing Tatum returns as Magic Mike, plus a star for Marvel's latest movie talks about her role in that film. Welcome back, 526. As Steph takes a deep breath, Channing Tatum is back as Magic Mike. <laughs> And Shang-Chi is arriving on home video. Here's CNN's David Daniel with our Hollywood Minute. See, she's all flustery. <laughs> Magic Mike is tapping back in. Channing Tatum is set to return for a third movie about the male stripper, Magic Mike's Last Dance for HBO Max. His last outing as Mike was Magic Mike XXL in 2015. 
Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings hits home video this week, featuring Mungar Zhang in her first movie role. The actress recalls getting the part. I got a really long message full in English, because English um, is not my first language. So I got a full, like this long message full in English, and I didn't breathe through. I just scrolled down to the very bottom and I saw, welcome to the Marvel Universe. And I said, like, okay, that's the only thing that matters. <laughs> the movies that inspired me, that made me who I am. Uh, Kevin Smith fans can find the films that help make him a filmmaker on the Movies Anywhere app. Like the chef has to eat too. And in order for the chef to prepare something that other people enjoy eating, he has to eat. And I fed myself on a heady library of films from the 70s and the 80s before I became a 90s filmmaker myself. Fans can find Smith's library and make their own with the My List feature on the Movies Anywhere app. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Oh, stop. I'm just worried, <laughs> just worried about you. I mean, you would do it for me. Yeah, it was like the No Shave crew, right? Yeah, sure. 527, about 47 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA as doctors keep an eye on the new COVID variant. The head of the Federal Reserve set to talk about what it means for the nation's economy. Plus, lots of people are still shopping online even after Cyber Monday. We'll tell you about the latest scams targeting your money. Speaking of no shave, no shave November is winding down. We're going to tell you how much you have helped us raise this month. Are you looking to shed some pounds without spending money on a gym membership? Ahead on GMSA at 6 this morning, some tips to getting the most out of your home workout. Off the clock and now on the run. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. San Antonio police are looking for a suspect who they believe may have shot his co-worker. I'll tell you more about it. And taking a look outside with live cam, if you like the 40s, enjoy them this morning. They're gonna go away for a little bit. We're gonna be checking in with Mike pretty soon. And today we say farewell to the month of November. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday the 30th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a nice Monday. It was pretty nice for me. I, I liked the cold in the morning and then the nice temperatures in the afternoon. Yeah, it was a, a pretty day and the moon came up overnight uh, early this morning and it's a beautiful start to the day overall. Mike, any fog of issue out there? Yes, we are starting to see a little bit more fog out there, but the, the one thing about a, a day like uh, yesterday as well as today, if you dress for the morning, it's going to be a little too much by the afternoon because we're going to be gaining about 30 degrees throughout the course of the day. So right now we have got uh, 45 degrees. Dew point stands at 41. So that number is just a little bit higher than what it was yesterday. We're still on the, the chilly side, about a normal low temperature right now. And uh, with that little bit of a breeze, we do have a slight bit of a wind chill. 43 is what it feels like here in town. 38 Randolph and 37 right now up the road in Kerrville. And as far as fog, it has now moved into Pleasanton. Mile and three quarters visibility right now and then a lot more of that well off to the east. Gonzales is down to a half mile. Same thing, Beeville. So again, with the relatively high humidity relative to the temperature and light wind or no wind out there, we are going to have to continue to watch out for some of this fog as it tries to work its way a little bit further inland throughout the course of the morning. Temperatures. Good looking day uh, once we get rid of some of this fog. If you don't have fog, you got a lot of clear skies out there this morning and we'll have mostly sunny skies. Maybe that kind of uh, some high wispy clouds, that little milky shade to the sky with some moisture aloft in the atmosphere. We'll be at 68, just about a normal high temperature at noon. So we are going to be on the warm side of things later on, getting up to 73. So again, jacket this morning, you won't need it by the afternoon. These numbers, well, they're going to be changing as we go into the month of December. It is going to be on the warm side to start off. What about the weekend? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Uh, Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, good morning, sir. Anything going on? Uh, just a few folks out there, Mike. That's what we've been seeing for the last half hour. So 37 at Hackberry. Let's take a look at Trans Guide Show. Things are shaping up for this hour. 1604 at Gulebda. Still pretty dark in a lot of these areas. The sun's not up yet, but we are seeing some folks out there at this hour. So nothing too big that's going to cause any issues at again at this moment. But let's take you right to the map because uh, just to be able to look at, we still have those stalls that we talked about a little bit earlier off 410 and 1604. Uh, a few construction spots as well, and we're going to get to that a little bit later on. But for now, 
Let's go ahead and check those inbound times. Green across the board, and we'd love to say it. Right now, coming in from I-10, it's again 29 minutes at this hour to the downtown San Antonio area. We're also looking at 22 minutes on 87 and Lavernia, and 28 coming in from Floridasville. Let's take one last look around town. Again, 37 at Jones Avenue. Not seeing a lot of activity out on the roadways just yet, so we can talk some construction coming up in the next few minutes. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police are investigating a case that involves more than just two co-workers not getting along. It was a late night shooting and they believe the victim and suspect worked together. Katrina Weber is live along AT&T Center Parkway near Interstate 35 with that story. And Katrina, we understand that is where police found the victim, but the shooting happened somewhere else. Well, that's right. They did find him here in the parking lot of this Valero station. He told them that he drove himself here to get help after being shot on Belgium Street, which is just up the road. Now, when police got to him after 11 o'clock last night, they say that that man was suffering from a gunshot wound in his shoulder. He's in his 30s. He was loaded up in an ambulance and taken to a hospital. And police say although he was stable, they did not have a chance to get a whole lot of information from him. But he told them the area where the shooting happened and that the person who shot him was a co-worker. So far, police have not found that person as far as we know. They say they did want to talk to the victim a little bit more after his medical needs had been addressed. And again, uh, right now, police don't even know why the shooting happened or what led up to it. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. There's still a lot we don't know about the Omicron variant, including how it could affect our economy. CNN's Brett Conway breaks down what we can expect to hear from the head of the Federal Reserve later today. All eyes on Omicron. This variant is a cause for concern, not a cause for panic. But when the World Health Organization flagged it as a variant of concern on Friday, Wall Street spun out, selling off stocks and oil, though it regained much of its lost ground Monday. Still, Omicron comes at a precarious time, a holiday shopping season already burdened by supply chain backup. The president hosted the CEOs of major retailers at the White House Monday to talk about tackling the gridlock. You know how incredibly busy you all are. And that can be a job you're doing to make sure people aren't disappointed. But economists worry disappointment could be the name of the game if Omicron prolongs the pandemic. The head of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, will testify on Capitol Hill this morning, laying out three major threats Omicron could pose to the U.S. economy, including the possibility prices could keep rising, job growth could take a hit, and the supply chain crisis could get worse. Writing in prepared remarks, quote, greater concerns about the virus could reduce people's willingness to work in person, which would slow progress in the labor market and intensify supply chain disruptions. But health experts say it could be a couple weeks before we know more about this variant. And no clear-cut answers on Omicron means no clear-cut answers on how it could impact our economy. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Facebook whistleblower Francis Haugen has now set is set rather to testify before a House subcommittee tomorrow. It'll be during that hearing that it's examining possible changes to laws governing tech companies. This is after Haugen leaked what some are calling the Facebook papers to the Securities and Exchange Commission. Haugen told senators last month she believes Facebook harms children, stokes division and weakens our democracy and that CEO Mark Zuckerberg should step down. Facebook claims the documents Haugen leaked provide a skewed image of the company's research and efforts. Today, November 30th, is the National Day of Giving. The unofficial holiday takes place each year on the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving, and people across the U.S. will be out doing things like volunteering, donating food, cleaning up communities, or donating blood. You can also donate online to your favorite charity or nonprofit organization. Time check 538, about 47 degrees. And still ahead, a lot of people are shopping online this week. We have the top three things you need to do to avoid being scammed this holiday season. And next we'll get an update on No Shave November because we will be shaved later today. <laughs> yes, enjoy this, this look while you have it. Uh, taking a look outside with live cam, 47 degrees, pretty chilly out there. Grab the coat, but you may not need it later today. We'll be right back.
Well, we have made it to the very end. Today is the last day of No Shave November. And our Stephen Cavazos, who's been leading the effort this year, joins us now with an exciting update. Good Gotta morning. be honest, man. If it was one more day, I'd probably go crazy. You think so? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, it looks good. You and Thank Mike you. look great. And you know what? I have become fond of these whiskers above my yeah? lips. So, I mean, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I hate to say goodbye to it, but, uh, you know, it's all been a really great month. A lot of the guys on our team have been doing, all the guys, that is, have been doing a great job at raising these funds and awareness back to cancer research treatment and prevention. And this year has been extraordinary. Our team has raised over $17,000. Isn't that amazing? Right now, of course, there is still time to donate. It is the last day of No Shave November. So take a look at our progress right now. There we have myself, Steve Spreeser, Dylan, my traffic bro, Samuel, Mike. I can name them all. David Sears, Mark, there you are as well. All these guys, this is the final look uh, that I got these photos yesterday. And so everybody has come a long way and I would even say I'm pretty proud of those whiskers that you're seeing on your screen right now. But again, there is still time to make a difference. If you'd like to donate, just head over to ksat.com slash no shave there. You will find a link to donate to Team KSAT. And of course, we still have more updates to share right here on GMSA and coming up a little bit later on in GMSA at nine, the shave down, right? I mean, this is a fun point. We, did, we didn't get a chance to do it last year. So a lot of the guys, Mark, uh, Mike, uh, going to get trimmed down today and by Wednesday going to be looking all fresh and dapper. Yes, we right. are. And KSAT finished uh, number two number in the country two. and had two or three guys in the top 10 yeah. yes. nationwide yeah. for individual fundraising. That's right. You said Justin just got a big donation. Justin got a big donation. Uh, but, you know, actually, Mark, Mike, and Justin, you guys are in the top three in terms of those individual fundraising efforts. Right. Top three in the country. So yeah. that's pretty That's pretty amazing. So yeah. uh, again, I think Mike would say Team, team Silver. There you go. <laughs> and you know what? Next year, if we do this again, Team Whiskers. Team, team Whiskers. Okay. <laughs> I like that competitiveness. All yeah. the teams did well. It, it's All been, it's just in this last couple of days, it's gotten really competitive behind <laughs> the scenes. Mm -hmm. gray. Yeah, like arm wrestling, but but not quite as manly. So, yeah. uh, but anyway, um, yeah, Mike does an arm wrestle. <laughs> Steven, thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. It's been a great year for sure. We knew it was going to go well, and it has been stupendous. Thanks again to donations, large and small, from viewers just like you. Thank you. Yes, thank you guys for making it happen. Time now, 543 and about 46 degrees out there. Well, up next, why a leading financial services firm says gas prices could reach $5 a gallon in some places by 2023. In your morning consumer headlines, this year's surge in oil prices has had a major impact on drivers and Americans' view on the economy. Financial services firm J.P. Morgan says the worst is yet to come. The firm now predicts that oil will jump to $125 a barrel next year and $150 in 2023. That's more than double the current price, roughly $73 a barrel. Oil at $150 per barrel would likely mean national gas prices topping $5 a gallon. However, J.P. Morgan isn't saying oil would maintain those high prices consistently. They are saying it would average $88 a barrel next year, overshooting at some point to $125. Cyber Monday is over, but millions of people still be shopping online this week. And security experts are reminding you to keep your guard up. CNN's Jen Sullivan has three things you should do to avoid becoming a victim. Beware before you click buy. With a record number of people continuing their online holiday shopping this week, experts say stay alert. We get international scammers that are tapping into the U.S. market by looking for products that they know are in high demand and pretending to offer those just to get people's credit card information. According to a survey from the National Retail Federation, online retailers like Amazon are expecting huge online sales. Last year, it was a record-breaking day for us on Cyber Monday, and we do expect it to be bigger and better this year. That massive online demand, along with the ongoing supply chain crisis, has some shoppers concerned about availability. An online security expert, Douglas Parisi, says that desperation may leave holiday shoppers vulnerable against scammers and hackers. The major carriers don't have the products, and so people start to look to third third party vendors, people that you know claim that they have several of these. And that should be a red flag is is if somebody has something available that they that is very difficult to find. Um, if they're not charging an exorbitant price, they're probably just scamming you. Here's what he recommends you keep in mind to protect your money and personal data while you shop online. Number one, shop only from trustworthy retailers with secure websites. Two, set up a separate email for online shopping only. 
And finally, use a credit card instead of a debit card for increased protection against any shady charges. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. 548, 47 degrees. And at last look at those traffic cameras. Things look okay, Stephen. Is that right? I think we can say okay for now, Mark and Steph. Let's take a look right now around town. There is I-10 at Bernie Stage. Very quiet start to this Tuesday morning. There's I-10 at Proban. Again, a few folks out there. No, not a lot of traffic. So great time to grab that cup of coffee and get your morning started early with us. But let's go ahead and take a look right now at the map because there are some construction spots and some of those spots will be clearing up today. Right now, let's go ahead and take you here to 1604 on the north Northwest side. Uh, this bridge widening construction, we've been talking about it throughout the entire month of November. It's led to an alternating full closure of the turnarounds at Kyle Steel Parkway in both directions. Now, this takes place from 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon, but again, that will be wrapping today. Uh, this is all part of the 1604 expansion project, so of course, this is just one portion that is wrapping, but we will continue to see that, uh, of course, uh, for a little while. Let's take a jump down here. There's still some bridge work going on for that led to the full closure of the eastbound frontage road from Cable Ranch Road to Loop 410. That started yesterday yesterday and we'll be wrapping up December 6, 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. So overnight, make sure that you're planning accordingly. Uh, our map is still picking up these two stalls off 410 and 1604. Just check the TxDOT website. No stalls are listed in that area, so I'll make sure that we can check in and clear those out in the next few moments. But right now, the roads have been looking good as we're inching closer to that 6 a.m. hour, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Not too bad. Beautiful picture back there. Cor I was going to give a shout out, though. Team Silver, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The, Justin no moved ahead. Come on. <laughs> All the folks out there, we've got to show, you know, we're sticking together here. Support Is there tonight. something else you're willing to do or say for these final moment donations? Hmm. Silver hair. <laughs> Silver hair. <laughs> it's time to donate and put our team back in the lead. Anyway. There you um, go. Hi. Okay. <clears throat> Now people are going, no way after that singing. Oh. Uh, anyway, beautiful. Look at that gorgeous picture over Woodlawn Lake. Thank you, Mr. McClellan, for that picture. And uh, not starting to see the glow as of yet, but we should in probably about the next uh, maybe 15, 20 minutes. And it's going to be a gorgeous sunrise again this morning. We do have some fog. Now, here's a case where, you know, it's a back and forth situation. Just about, uh, what, 15, 20 minutes ago, it was a mile and three quarters visibility at Pleasanton. Now it's back up to 10 miles and then a lot of fog out here. Gonzales, Beeville and Corpus Christi. So we're going to have to watch it. Um, you know, Seguin, Pleasanton, maybe even in toward New Braunfels because we've got relatively high humidity and either very light or no wind out there. We do have enough of a breeze, though, to put temperatures down a couple of notches. Feels like 37 in Kerrville, 43 here in town right now, and a pair of 38s there, Bulverde, as well as Randolph with the uh, wind chill temperatures. And again, some moisture aloft in the atmosphere, so we're going to have, it's going to be a good looking day today. Very, very pleasant jacket this morning, no jacket uh, by later on this afternoon, and kind of that milky shade to the sky. And again, humidity is going to continue to go up. And that low out there to the west of us is what is going to be dominating our weather. I don't know if dominating is the right word, but it's going to be kind of controlling our weather. It's going to continue to send a lot of moisture in here aloft in the atmosphere. So as surface moisture goes up, we're going to have a lot of morning clouds hanging around and more sunshine tomorrow and then on Thursday. Then as we go into Friday, that low out there to the west is going to throw some little bits of energy in here, and that's going to give us a small chance for some rain Friday and really in through the weekend. It's not going to be any sort of a washout. It's not going to be a whole lot of rain, but just enough. So that low will just kind of kind of fester off to the west of us there off the coast of Baja of California. And again, it will start to throw some energy, throw some moisture in our direction and just sort of scooch in here a little bit and kind of hang out over the weekend. So it's going to be uh, well, it's not going to be any sort of a prize winning kind of a weekend and it will definitely be on the warm and kind of humid side. So 68 degrees today, mostly sunny skies at noon already at the normal high temperature and then a high today up to 73 and uh, kind of that veiled sunshine a little bit but good looking day, 74 tomorrow and then mid and upper 70s. So we'll be about 10 degrees above normal for high temperatures by the end of the week and the weekend and just a little bit of some rain out there. So did you like my uh, little ad living on some of those? We, we did, we yeah, did. Very nice. Steven? I was indifferent. I can, oh, you were indifferent. <laughs> I can hear the donations coming in now for Team <laughs> Steven. <laughs> Don, did you hear Mike's version of Silver Bells? Oh, it was tremendous. <laughs> That's our director, Don. Thank you, Don. Mm -hmm. I don't believe it. <laughs> 553, about 47 degrees. <laughs>
<laughs> Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, four, nine, five, fireball zero, daily four, six, nine, four, three, fireball six. I always like when the crew looks so stunned when we speak to them during an actual <laughs> broadcast. They're like, you oh, talking me? to me? me? You talking to me? Uh, okay, where are we at? Cash five? Yeah, yes. four, six, nine, 12, 13, Texas two-step, one, 22, 26, 29, bonus ball, 25, and, and Powerball. 18, 26, 28, 38, 47, power ball 17, power play 2. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're tracking the latest on the new COVID variant. Government officials bracing for it while racing to contain it. The CDC now recommending boosters for all adults. The head of the NIH, Dr. Francis Collins, is going to join us live. You'll see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Today is the last day to help the San Antonio Police Department collect shoes for kids who need them. You can still drop off your shoe donation at any SAPD substation. We need shoes of all sizes from toddlers to teens. After today, all the shoes collected will be given to Good Samaritan Community Services. that will be delivered to kids just in time for the holidays. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA will hear from golf star Tiger Woods. He's opening up about his recent car crash and is shedding some light on his future. And here at home, we'll have the very latest on an overnight shooting on San Antonio's east side that sent one person to a hospital. Police are still looking for the shooter. Transcode right now, we're not seeing a lot of traffic in that last shot, and we are seeing a few more cars at 1604 at Spurs Ranch Road. There's a live look at 410 and Bandera. Stephen Cavazos will have you updated on your morning commute so far as we head into the six o'clock hour. We will be right back. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The new COVID-19 variant Omicron is spreading across the globe. What the president and top health officials are urging from Americans. Coming up. Questions remain following a shooting on the east side. A suspect still on the loose. We'll tell you everything we know. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's going to be another beautiful day. But for now, we're at 47 degrees. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is the last day of the month. It's Tuesday, the 30th. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. I'm excited about the weather once again. I'm excited about a whiskerless face. <laughs> We're going to be shaved live at Henley's uh, Gentleman's uh, Barbershop during GMSA at 9 today. Mm -hmm. A bunch yes. of us are over there and losing the beard. So, but yeah. hey, thank you, thank you, thank you. We can't thank folks enough yeah. because, yeah. you know, we've been for the longest time, and I think still number two in the country as a team. Wow. Uh, with donations more than 17 well, grand. Steven's done a great job yeah. as our team captain this year, and he's going to get you updated in this hour as we wrap up a fantastic month of fundraising. And again, thank you to everybody that has participated. Yes, yes very indeed. Generous. So um, this morning, grab a jacket before you head out the door. It is cold again, and this is going to be the last of the really chilly mornings. We're going to start seeing with the new month, of course, things are going to be changing. Right now, we're at 47 degrees, uh, about a normal low, maybe a little bit above that. 38 Kerrville, 38 Ball Verde. And then factor in the uh, slight breeze out there. It feels like 45 in town, 38 right now at Randolph. So not much of a wind chill to deal with, but you know, just enough to add that little again kind of nip to some of these temperatures. Also, we are looking at some fog now. About uh, half an hour ago, visibility was down to less than two miles at Pleasanton. Then it popped back up to 10 miles and just a hint of fog there at Port SA, but a lot more off to the east around uh, Seguin, Gonzales, Beeville, and right along the coastal plain. So you just got to kind of continue to watch it, especially east of uh, east of 35 for maybe a little bit of this fog to try and develop throughout the course of the morning. Temperatures drop down another a few degrees here and there in the next couple of hours. A nice chilly start and then we warm up very quickly once again and like yesterday we're going to be gaining about 30 degrees between the low and the high. So we'll make it into the upper 60s today at noon and then top off in the low 70s about 5 degrees below, excuse me above normal and that will definitely be the trend over the next couple of days. Low temperatures by the end of the week are going to be about 20 degrees warmer. High temperatures will be about 10 degrees warmer than normal once we get in toward the end of the week. Maybe a couple of uh, showers here and there. Get all the details sorted out in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, it's been pretty
pretty quiet. What's the latest? Calm roads. Good. And we like that, Mike, especially at this hour. You know, we get a lot more people out on the roadways as they're getting their morning started, maybe getting ready, to, getting the kids ready to go to school or maybe getting ready to go to work. Thankfully, right now it has been smooth sailings for the most part. Take a look around town 1604 at Spurs Ranch, 410 at Bandera, just getting a few more people out there. But overall, the issues have been almost non-existent, but we know that can quickly change. So let's go ahead and take you to the map right now. See what you're going to be expecting out there just so far. A lot of open lanes and empty roads, uh, but we do again have a few folks out there. Uh, some construction spots as well to be on the lookout for, but overall nothing too big that's going to cause any delays for that early morning drive. Let's take you right now to those inbound times. If you plan on heading into San Antonio from any of our neighboring communities, check it out. Pleasanton right now. Pleasant drive from 37 with 28 minutes at this hour coming in from Lytle on 35. It's looking pretty good with 17 minutes coming in from Highway 90 and Castrill. Not too bad of a drive, just 19 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area. Let's take one last look around town. I 10 at Pro Bend. It has been a quiet start as we're getting Tuesday morning going. We'll continue to watch these roads closely, but as always, keep your eyes on the road as well. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police are looking for a suspect in an overnight shooting on the east side of town. It happened just after 11 near AT&T Center Parkway and Belgium Lane. That's where San Antonio police say they found a man in his 30s with a gunshot wound to the shoulder. He was taken to the hospital and is expected to be OK. That suspect drove away from the scene. The Bear County Sheriff's Office has confirmed the detention cadet died during a training exercise. They say the 59 year old cadet had a medical episode and was pronounced dead late yesterday afternoon. Sheriff's Office says the cadet had trouble breathing and was allowed to rest, but his condition began to worsen. He was taken to the hospital but did not survive. Our Sarah Costa staying on top of the story will join us coming up in the next half hour with more. Police in Texas and Oklahoma looking for a homicide suspect in San Antonio who may be linked to a missing woman from Oklahoma. Back in 2018, police accused Francisco Velasquez of shooting and killing a man at a restaurant on the southwest side. He was supposed to be in court back in August, but it's not clear what happened that day or if he even showed up. Now he's in trouble for a separate case. Investigators in Oklahoma say he dated Talon Cheyenne Torto Padilla, who's now missing. She left work 24 days ago in Wayne, Oklahoma. No one has seen her since. Investigators in Oklahoma say Velasquez also goes by the name Mike Baco Mendoza. They say he's armed and dangerous. If you know where he is, you are asked to call 911. President Biden urging everyone to stay vigilant of the new COVID-19 variant, Omicron. The president also saying not to panic. He's pushing for all adults and eligible children to get vaccines and boosters. And as travel bans are carried out to delay the spread of the virus, scientists are scrambling to find out just how dangerous this new strain might be. ABC's M1 has more from Washington. This morning, rising urgency as scientists race to learn more about the new COVID-19 variant Omicron and how dangerous it might be. If people are vaccinated and wear their masks, there's no need for the lockdown. This variant is a cause for concern, not a cause for panic. The U.S., along with more than a dozen other countries, have put travel restrictions in place for non-citizens. So far, about 200 cases have been confirmed across the globe and are steadily increasing. Still no confirmed cases here in the U.S., but Dr. Fauci suggests the strain could already be here, telling CNN we have to step up vaccinations. Vaccination is going to be the solution to this, whether it's the Delta variant or whether it's the Omicron variant. Vaccination is going to be the solution. This, as hospitalizations across the country have climbed more than 20% since the start of the month. Doctors say the variant's high number of mutations could make it more transmissible with an increased risk of reinfection. I'm worried that the normal patients that we would usually get to take care of around this time aren't going to make it here because the beds are being taken by the month long or more COVID stays. Vaccine manufacturers say they're ready to update the vaccine formulas to reflect new protections against Omicron if needed. Health experts are sticking by the current vaccines for now. I think it will provide at least a certain amount of protection, maybe a lot of protection. We don't know yet. President Biden is calling on all nations attending the World Trade Organization meeting next week to waive intellectual property protections for COVID vaccines like the U.S. so they can be manufactured globally. Emwin, ABC News, Washington.
And back here at home, we are in a dangerous holding pattern when it comes to blood supply. Right now, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center reporting there's only a two and a half day supply of blood there at the tissue center. Other blood centers are asking hospitals to stop voluntary surgeries to help with blood supply. We have more information on where to donate posted for you over on our website at KSAT.com. Are you looking for work? Northside ISD is holding a transportation job fair later this week. District looking for bus drivers and has full time positions with benefits available. Staff members will be on site to conduct interviews. Applicants must be at least 21 years old. Job fair happening on Friday from 9 a.m. to noon at the NISD Transportation North Station. And that's located at 6323 West Hausman Road. Time check right now, 608, about 47 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, what if you could charge all of your Apple devices wirelessly all at once? More on this after the break. And could Tiger Woods be making a comeback? The golf star opening up about his February car crash. We have that story just ahead. And taking a look outside with a live cam, it feels like November right now. We're in the 40s, but will it feel like December later this week? Hmm, we'll be checking in with Mike pretty soon. We turn now to Tiger Woods revealing new information about his recovery since that scary car crash back in February. We are also hearing about his future in golf. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details. In his first major interview since February's car crash, Tiger Woods is opening up to Golf Digest about his recovery. It's been a hell of a road. It's been a long one, it's been a sore one. And revealing that while in the hospital, he feared his leg would need to be amputated. There was a point in time when he was, um, I wouldn't say 50-50, but it was damn near there, but I'm not, I was, was going to walk out of that hospital with one leg. Now, just nine months later, Woods says he's able to walk with limited pain, striding into his interview. I'm able to walk on my own now. Uh, I still struggle going up, up or down. Woods is no stranger to injury, having had five surgeries on his back alone. He surprised everyone last week when he posted this video, hitting a shot at a driving range. It really is just phenomenal that he is swinging a club again right now. But despite his apparent good health, he says he still has a long way to go before he's able to be competitive. I'm able to chip and putt and do other things, swing clubs, but there's no endurance. Although he hopes to play again soon, Woods now acknowledges his days of being a full-time golfer are over. I think something that is realistic is playing the tour one day, never full-time ever again. Um, yeah. Pick and choose is an unfortunate reality, but it's my reality. And I understand it and I accept it. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. And Tiger says his greatest motivation during his recovery has been his son, Charlie. Woods will speak with the reporters today before hosting his annual golf tournament down in the Bahamas. Well, today's Tech Bytes Twitter CEO discussing his resignation. Jack Dorsey says he wasn't pushed out after announcing he's stepping down as CEO of Twitter, which he co-founded. Twitter's chief of technology is taking over as CEO. A wireless charger that can handle multiple devices at the same time is reportedly in the works at Apple, a replacement for the company's failed air power charging mat. Bloomberg says Apple is also looking to develop technology for devices to charge each other, like using your iPhone to charge your AirPods. Let's check traffic at 614. Steven, how's it looking? Not bad, I would say, especially for 615. We usually we start to see some issues out on the roadways that would be seen here on these trans guide cameras. Taking a look right now, 37 at Hackberry looks pretty normal again, uh, but things can change when we start to see more people get out on the roadway. 1604 Kulebna, pretty dark out there, so make sure that you're driving carefully. Uh, 1604 at Spurs Ranch, pretty empty out in that corridor, but let's go ahead and take you to the map, and we're going to actually take you off of the highway here for just a moment because a crash came in here off Northwest Military Highway at Ebner Road. We are seeing a slight buildup again. This is off the main highways, but we know that this is a heavily traveled route. So uh, maybe make sure that you plan alternative routes if this is in your direction in the next few minutes. And if you have to travel through that way, watch out for first responders who are working to clear the scene. Make sure you're checking those vehicles as well, because we still see those pesky stalls that are presenting to be an issue out there. Loop 410 westbound at Harry Wurzbach Parkway. Uh, we saw a few a little bit earlier this morning, but thankfully those have since cleared out as we take a wider look at the map. I don't think this would make 
anybody upset. 615, we are seeing lots of green roads, and that is exactly what a lot of folks would like to see, especially as we're going to get closer to that morning rush hour. Here's I-10 appropriate, I-35 north at Loop 410. The roads are shaping up to look nice so far. We're going to continue to give you guys the updates here on the morning show. Guys? Steven, got to be honest, I am going to miss the goatee. The go is oh, it a yeah. goatee yeah. now? Looks yeah, nice. it's kind of a goatee going there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, one of our directors, Don, said it looks like the three, you know, three musketeers. I could do a little bit, a <laughs> little bit, which isn't necessarily a bad no. look. No, you're, um, you're like the hero of no shave. Oh, <laughs> who okay. are you, Athos, Porthos, Aramis, or D'Artagnan? Uh, the last one, whoever that is. The last one. His name sounds cool. <laughs> 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 All right. Chilly morning, grab a jacket, won't need it by the afternoon like yesterday, so don't necessarily dress for this, you know, head dressing layers, I guess you could say. Yes. So well, show us your tie yeah. and your mug real quick. Oh. A snowman tie. I got snowman tie. Yeah. My, oh, look at you. Yeah. Hold out like, the, the Christmas china. Like so I gotta bring Clark it Clark so. Griswold's dad. Basically, yes, you know, so yeah, anyway. And, and of course, we've got our tree there with all the thermometers that Caskey made yep. for us. So. Very nice. Merry Christmas, all everybody. In the, all in the Christmas spirit, yeah. yes, indeed. So, and I'm kind of looking like Santa Claus here with the white beard. So, <laughs> all right, 43 degrees this morning. We'll continue to maybe uh, cool down a couple of more notches here and there. Very chilly, and then it's going to warm up quickly throughout the day. Once again, like yesterday, we're going to be gaining about 30 degrees between the low and the high. Then things are going to start to change. We're not going to have those big uh, swings in temperatures. Speaking of Christmas, Check this one out. Bless you. Thank you. Gorgeous. It is a forest of Frosties out there. How cool. <laughs> oh, that is just beautiful. Is that a family? Yeah, it looks like A family like of it. Frosties. Very, yeah. Very pretty. Uh, kind of like the skeletons. Like mom and dad, the boys and girls right there. So, <laughs> oh, those trees are decorated so beautiful. And we've got uh, another one coming up next half hour as well, which, you know, the big Christmas uh, light fight, I guess, was a show or something like that. Right. The winner was out in, uh, in Windcrest. So yeah. took a picture of that. Yep. So that's coming up next half hour. All right, beautiful. Look at that gorgeous sunrise. A couple of wispy clouds out there. We'll keep a few of those around throughout the day. And uh, visibility is pretty good in the metropolitan area right now, but then off to the east, a lot of around Gonzales, a lot of fog there down along the coastal plain. So most of it's going to stay confined along the coastal plain, but just kind of be on the lookout for it because we've got relatively high humidity this morning and not much of a breeze out there. So as temperatures continue to drop down a little bit with no real good blanket of clouds on top of us, we might see a little bit of fog trying to develop. Yesterday we hit 70, about um, two, three degrees above the normal average high temperature, and it'll be a little bit warmer this morning excuse me, a little bit warmer this afternoon, and uh, we'll still see that, like I said, 30 degree swing from the low to the high. Uh, 73, maybe I'll play that in lottery tonight. Pretty common number for high temperatures later on today. Nothing really showing up on the uh, satellite picture. A couple of clouds here and there. You can see those, just those uh, few of them that are showing up that we saw on the uh, live cam shot there. And then upstream, not really a heck of a lot going on. The main flow of the jet is up there to the north of us, kind of the, the storm track, if you will. But see that little bit of circulation right there. That's the low, which is going to just kind of sit there off the west coast over the next couple of days and then throw more moisture in our direction and eventually throw some energy in our direction. And that's going to give us the chance for a couple of uh, showers coming in here, maybe by Friday and then lingering around into the weekend. It's not going to be a rain out. I mean, we could obviously use some more rain, but um, there'll just be a couple of showers here and there over the weekend. So today it's going to be another beautiful day warming up quickly. This morning we'll gain, you know, anywhere from 25, 20, 25 degrees between now and noon up to 68, mostly sunny skies. And then high temperature is going to make it up to 73, about five above normal. Good looking afternoon. And then tomorrow we start off different story, mid fifties and get up to the mid seventies, mid and upper seventies to finish up the week and low temperatures will be right around uh, 60 or so. A bit of a front's going to move through shave temperatures off by Monday, just back down to normal readings. And again, a couple of those sprinkly showers over the weekend. I like what you said. You said shave those temperatures off. Mm. Uh, I did not <laughs> do that intentionally, but thank you. <laughs> oh, take, good move. Take, take, take the credit. Yeah. Sub subliminal to what's going on this morning. So That's right. On. Yeah, join us today on GMSA at 9 for that. The big shave off. The shave November. Yes. Yeah. 620, about 47 degrees. Is that a note? Yes, shave. Yes. And still ahead on GMSA, the Spurs are getting hot. They're now on a two-game winning streak. Yeah, we'll take it. We'll recap their matchup with Wizards after the break.
this year, take the time to melt into your holiday moments with Lindor. Irresistibly smooth chocolate from the Lindt Master Chocolatier. Infused with nourishing serum and almond oil, Nivea Essentially Enriched Lotion helps lock in goodness for smooth, luminous skin so you can go from morning until happy hour with this lady. For goodness that keeps going, nourish on with Nivea. Some people have joint pain, plus have high blood pressure. They may not be able to take just anything for pain. That's why doctors recommend Tylenol. It won't raise blood pressure the way that Advil, Aleve, or Motrin sometimes can. For trusted relief, trust Tylenol. Right now, we want to get a late breaking news on the northwest side. We're hearing reports of an apartment fire. This is happening right now near Great View Drive and Callahan Road. Katrina Weber joins us now from the scene. Katrina, what do we know so far? Well, I can see that there is a, an entire building on fire. We've seen flames through the roof, and we know that people from that building have been evacuated. Let me step out of the way. Uh, this, you can see the firefighters are still in the thick of this fight. There are still flames coming up from the top of the roof. These are the Sugar Hill Apartments on Great View Drive. This is near Callahan Road and I-10. Uh, they, uh, firefighter, firefighters are trying to round up everybody from this building. We've seen the incident commander going around and asking people, are you in building eight? Are you in building eight? They're trying to get everyone centralized and together and away from the danger here because we still have an active fire going on. There are about 30 fire units here right now, including uh, the investigators but they are trying to knock this fire down, again, affecting just one building so far at the Sugar Hill Apartments. We haven't heard of any injuries or anything. Firefighters are not able to get inside right now because we heard them saying that part of the roof was collapsing, so they're doing their best to put this out from the outside. But again, a very active fire going on right now. It broke out just minutes ago, and uh, firefighters doing their best to put this out and round up everyone from that building, make sure they're all safe. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. More on that story as we get it. All right, our Spurs trying to start the first win streak of the season last night against the Wizards. It was a silver black defense help ignite the offense. Derek White finished with 24 points, where DeJounte Murray finished with 22. In the end, the Spurs get the W. Final from the AT&T Center. Spurs win one, 116 to 99. San Antonio is now on a small but a significant two game win streak. Spurs have a couple nights off, then they're back in action Thursday night in Portland. They'll be taking on the Trailblazers at 9 p.m. San Antonio time. On to high school football. Brennan Bears headed to the state quarterfinals after they were able to remain undefeated and number one in 12's top 12. That's after they outscored Austin Bowie 59 to 36 to advance to the 6A Region 4 Division 1 championship game against an always powerful Lake Travis. Now they'll put that 13 and 0 record on the line against the Cavaliers Saturday at 2 o'clock up in Dripping Springs. And time now 626 and about 47 degrees out there. Health officials across the country have rising concerns over the new COVID-19 variant Omicron. Ahead in our next half hour, we're going to hear from health experts about what they know so far. Right now, taking a look at a beautiful sunrise there on the horizon in one of our TransGuide cameras. Dark in this one still. Let's get updated on the morning commute with Stephen Cavazos after this break. No Shave November is winding down. We're going to take a look at the final beards just ahead. And outside with live cam right now, really pretty start to the day and the end of the month of November. We'll talk to Mike and Stephen in just a moment. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, November 30th. Thanks for joining us. It is really pretty out there. It's gorgeous. So get a bit on the cool side, but Mike says this could be the last of the chilliest of mornings mm -hmm. for a little while. Yeah, at least through the rest of the week then and even going into the weekend, it's going to kind of change. Yeah, month of December, go figure, and then we're going to be kind of on the uh, the warm side. But wasn't Halloween just like yesterday? I know. It was. It happened really fast. Mm -hmm. And then goodbye to... Yeah, the beards. They'll have a new look. Join soon. us today at 9.
all the guys, most all the guys, I think, are going to be out there. And uh, yeah, we're going to kind of lose the whiskers here. But boy, oh boy, it has definitely been worth it. And we're going to have an update on that coming up. But thank you, folks, for uh, for donating. Yeah, we were talking about beautiful sunrise this morning. You can see a couple of clouds are hanging around here as well. We've got some moisture, obviously, in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. So we'll keep a few of those around throughout the day. 47 degrees and the dew points at 43. So these two numbers are fairly close, even though the humidity is quite low. It's comfortable out there. but numbers are, are kind of close together. We do have a slight bit of a breeze, and so therefore there is a little bit of a wind chill right now. 45 out there at the airport, and it feels like 38 in Balverde. And with those two numbers close together, humidity or the excuse me temperature and dew point temperature, relatively high humidity, we are seeing a little bit of fog. So once again, Pleasanton, uh, about an hour ago, it was down to a mile and three quarters, then up to 10 miles. Now it's back down to two and a half miles visibility, a hint of fog there at Port SA, and then a lot more fog uh, off to the east of us. So we'll still have to be on the lookout for this over the next couple of hours. Mold is on the light side. That updated uh, reading is going to be coming out in about uh, half an hour, 45 minutes or so. Mostly clear skies, a couple of those clouds out here. It, it is chilly this morning, and then we'll have plenty of sunshine today. Uh, maybe a milky shade to the sky, a couple of clouds here and there. It's going to be on the warm side. We'll make it up into the low 70s today. Um, a few more clouds tomorrow as well as Thursday, especially in the morning, and it is going to be warmer. Low temperatures, still jacket weather, but won't be as chilly as uh, what it was yesterday and this morning. And then we go into Friday and the weekend. Warm, it's going to be kind of on the humid side, and yeah, a couple of showers here and there. Not a great rain chance, but just one or two of them out there. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Um, dare I say it's been a really quiet morning? Yeah, Is it you still? can say it. I, I say I dare you to say it. It's been a quiet morning. Is it still? <laughs> it's it's been a quiet morning. You know, right now, <laughs> you know what? Uh, we have this shot at Loop 410 at Northwest Military. It's beautiful out there from what we're seeing. The sun's coming out, but yeah, the roads have been looking beautiful as well. You can take a look. Here are some a uh, few folks getting their morning started early with us. Uh, you know, we are basically at morning rush hour, so nothing too big. Uh, that's great. Not going to cause any delays for that early morning drive, but let's go ahead and take you right to the map, show you what you can expect. Uh, we do have some of those stalls, Loop 410 Westbound at Harry Wurzbach Parkway. Uh, still an issue out over there. Taking you a little bit further up, uh, looks like this crash off Northwest Military Highway at Hebner Road. We told you about this. It's off of the main highways, but heavily traveled route. Looks like that crash is not causing any issues, but be on the lookout for first responders. Taking you up here, though, we still have another stall that popped up, 1604 Westbound at Redland Road. So that has been the real issue throughout this Tuesday morning. It's just a bunch of those stalled vehicles out there. Whenever you see a person that is stranded on the highway, make sure you move over or slow down. Give them plenty of room to receive assistance. A green across the board. We have not seen any delays traveling into the downtown San Antonio area. So some good news for our neighboring communities uh, for my family up in Bernie. 24 minutes if you plan on visiting me in San Antonio. So not too bad right now. But let's go ahead and take one last look at Trans Guy Loop 410 at Northwest Military. Looking beautiful outside, guys. Stephen, thank you very much. A massive fire on the city's northwest side forces evacuations at an apartment complex. This is happening at the Sugar Hill Apartments on the northwest side. Katrina Weber joins us live from the scene. And Katrina, do we know if anyone was hurt? No, we haven't heard anything about any injuries, but uh, firefighters are going around trying to take stock of who made it out of the building. They're asking people out here if they they live in that building. So they're trying to get that uh, right now, get that information right now. Uh, now, let me just give you a look at what's been happening in the last few minutes. Uh, it looks like they have at least knocked down some of the flames that we saw just a few minutes ago, but I can still see flickers of the fire on the top of the roof. That roof, uh, uh, the fire did burn through the roof, and firefighters have been taking uh, sort of a stand-back approach. They've been fighting this from the outside because of that roof collapse uh, possibility, that danger there. Uh, they have not had a chance to go around, I don't believe, and check to see if anyone is in any of those apartments. They did the evacuation as quickly as possible while this building was raging. Now, what we have seen them doing is going to this other section I, I don't know, I can't tell if this was part of the same building or a separate building, but they've been going around and looking to see if there is any sign of fire here. And again, people from this building, Building 8 here at the Sugar Hill Apartments, uh, evacuated out here in the parking lot in the cold because of this fire which broke out about an hour ago. Firefighters still trying to make sure they put it out and also just to get uh, an assessment of who did make it out and, and before they get a chance to go inside. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Katrina, thank you. Also new this morning, a man fighting for his life after he was struck by a vehicle. Happened around 6 last night on West Commerce, not far from Southwest 36th Street. That's where police say a man in a 60s stepped into the road and was hit by an oncoming vehicle. He was taken to the hospital. Last check, he was in critical condition. The driver who hit him did stop to help and is not expected to face charges. A Bear County Sheriff's Office cadet is dead this morning. BCSO officials say it happened during a training exercise yesterday. And there are still quite a few questions surrounding this incident. Sarah Costa joined us live in the studio with the latest. Sarah? Hey, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Such a tragic incident that we're learning about. And yes, we're still waiting for information to be released. But here's what we know so far. The 59-year-old detention cadet suffered a medical episode during the physical exercise training. BCSO officials say this was the first day of a training academy for 13 cadets. The sheriff's office says the cadet who died started feeling shortness of breath. He was allowed to rest but began to feel worse before he eventually lost consciousness. Academy instructors performed life-saving measures but they were not successful. He was taken to Methodist Hospital where he later died. We still don't know the name of the cadet and the official cause of death will be determined by an autopsy. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Right now, it's exactly 637. Be concerned, but do not panic. That's advice from experts when it comes to this new Omicron variant. The emergence of the new variant brings a lot of questions about the severity, transmissibility, and whether or not our current vaccines can prevent it. And unfortunately, doctors do not have all of those answers yet. Dr. Jason Bowling with University Health System says the variants are evolving to try to get through our current protection measures. Basically, it's changing its key so it can work around our treatments and still infect cells. So things that we've been using to try and block it from entering the door, so to speak, it's trying to work its way around by creating a new key. While we don't know how the Omicron variant will impact vaccine effectiveness, uh, they say Dr. Bulling says there are still they are still our best line of defense. Local pharmacies as well as Metro Health continue to offer the COVID-19 vaccine and booster shots. In other consumer news, online sales are cooling off a little bit at the traditional start of the holiday shopping season, Black Friday through Cyber Monday. But experts say that's largely because retailers have been pushing deals for weeks. Adobe says Cyber Monday sales will likely be between $10.2 and $11.3 billion, but could come in below last year's numbers. Federal Trade Commission wants to know more about supply chain issues still plaguing the U.S. economy. It's asking for info on how companies like Procter & Gamble, Amazon and Walmart are handling them. Officials at the FTC are looking into whether snarled supply chains have led to anti-competitive behavior and higher prices. All right, want to get our final update on our progress for No Shave November. Stephen Cavazos joins us again with all of those details. Good morning. And again, hats off to Stephen for being uh, our team leader this year. Awesome. It's done a great job. I know it yeah, hasn't always been easy, but you've done a great job and we salute you. Oh, wow. Well, you know, I appreciate it. Uh, I definitely appreciate the guidance as well. We've had some great, uh, some great moments throughout the month of November, and I'm definitely going to miss that jingle and our uh, <laughs> case at mascot Hank, but uh, we've done a phenomenal job so far when we've been raising those funds. Let's go ahead and take one final look at our beers and what our team has passed already $17,000. And I've been saying this all month long. I really do look the same compared to all of you guys, <laughs> but I have grown fond of my own whiskers. And, and I just want to also thank all the guys that have participated this month, Mark, Mike, and some of our guys that are also behind the scenes, like our assistant news director, Mario, or our photojournalist, Azian and Ken. You know, we really do appreciate all you guys taking part in this this year. So let's go ahead and take a look at that leaderboard because this is also wow. the fun part of it. Uh, right now, Justin Horn, Mike, he's topped you there with a little over $2,900. Mike Osterhage, you're not too far behind him, $2,400. Mark Austin, 1960. I got 1615 for myself right now. And David Sears, 15 30 he made the jump up the ladder yes, as well he so did. he did yeah. and you know what this is not necessarily something that is uh, we ha we have a competitive nature here in the newsroom yeah. so it's all in good fun i know mike has been putting the call out to team silver hair uh silver yeah fox. Silver, silver fox or silver hair both 
Silver gray white. Silver gray white. <laughs> <laughs> we got to stick together, folks. We got to get to the top of the. And the you know what? We are still, despite whoever comes out on top at the end of the month, we're still going to stick together because all the funds, are, again, keep a quick reminder, go back to our cancer research, treatment, and prevention. For more information, just head to ksat.com slash no shave. There you'll find a link to donate to Team KSAT. And of course, we'll have more coming up later this morning on GMSA at 9 for the big shave. That's yeah. right. And all we're coming off, here. guys. Over at uh, Henley's Gentleman's right. Grooming and Barber Shop. Yep, that's right. Or uh, Team Shave. Yes. yes. I'll do mine in my bathroom, though. I'll be there. Okay. You'll be there. All right. Okay. <laughs> I, think, yes. I think Stephen's driving the interviews today. Yes. Yes. yes indeed. We'll talk All right. To you. Look Thanks. forward to it. Uh, again, thank you, everybody, for your donations. And again, you can you still submit those right now yes. throughout the day. Uh, just again, go to ksat.com slash no shave. By the way, Team KSAT's still number, number two, two in the country. For overall awesome. donations this year, I believe No Shave November has raised now just over half a million dollars. That's great news. Thanks to your donation. So thank you again for making it happen. 641, about 47 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, some pro tips for getting fit without getting a gym membership. And welcome back. It is 644. We're taking another live look there around Callahan and Great View. These are the apartments that have been on fire. We have a crew on the scene, about 28 units responding this morning. And these are the Sugar Hill apartments. Ladder truck is still up. We're still seeing some smoke out there and a, a lot of water on the ground from the fight earlier this morning. Uh, this is an ongoing story. Our crew is still on the scene. Look for updates in our later newscasts and online at ksat.com. And in other news, are you looking to shed some pounds, but you don't have time or you don't want to spend money on a gym membership? Don't look behind you right now. He's literally right there. <laughs> Health experts say a home workout could be just as effective. Picking up some dumbbells or some exercise bands are an inexpensive way to create a home routine that works several muscle groups. Push-ups and squats also hit a number of areas. So other options include yoga, poses, and calf raises. Both are exercises that can really make you feel the burn. Above all, health experts say the most important thing to remember, pace yourself and gradually increase your workout time as you progress in your routine. A lot of dollar stores like Five Below, mm -hmm. they have a lot of this stuff for cheap, cheap. Yeah. So go get, yeah. get some of that stuff. Check it's it out. A, it's a matter of just like putting aside the time. Exactly. And sticking to it. Yeah, that can be difficult, but we can do it. All right. 646 right now. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen. Oh, no. Do we have a problem on the roadway? We do. Uh, we're not sure exactly what we're looking at here. I-10 at Pro Band. This is just the camera shot that we're seeing from Trans Guide. You can see we have those flashing lights out there. Traffic moving, uh, but not very fast at this hour. So this looks like a stall from what I'm seeing here from this shot at Trans Guide, but still very dark and the image is also a little shaky and blurry. So as hopefully as the morning picks up, we'll be able to find out what's going on there, but hopefully by then it'll clear out. So uh, let's see, go ahead and take you to the map to take a look at what's going on right now on the roadways. We still have that crash off Northwest Military Highway at Hebner Road, not causing any issues, but always be on the lookout for those first responders. As we take a jump around town, we still have that stall 1604 westbound at Redland Road. Jump down here does show we have that stall still detected off 410 westbound at Harry Wurstbach Parkway and uh, jump down over here. I 10 westbound and I 35 another stalled vehicle. Wider look at the map does show that has been the trend throughout the morning. A few of those stalled vehicles that have been out there. So make sure that of course you give those drivers plenty of room if they are having any trouble along the highway. Make sure your vehicles are working properly. We'll find out what's going on here at I 10 at Pro Band. But for now, let's go over to Mike. What you got there, Mike? Oh, you may have uh, heard that wow. a local family won the great Christmas light fight out there in Windcrest, and there's the picture. And like uh, Ooh, Skywatcher nice. says, it's even more amazing in person. Wow. Beautiful. How long did it take to do that, I wonder? That's just amazing. I want to see it now in person. I know, I know. Awesome. You want to drive out. I bet the line of cars. Yeah, I was going to say, get in, <laughs> get in line, especially on the weekend, right? Oh, yeah. Worth All the right. trip for a lot of folks, yes. though. Yes. It, it, it's so great to drive around and look at, at Christmas lights like that. All right, got a couple of clouds hanging around here right now. Sunrise is going to be pretty spectacular, obviously, with a few of those clouds. And we do have some, now, again, Pleasanton. It's been going back and forth. Uh, it was just at a two and a half miles visibility, now back up to 10 miles. So just watch it along kind of the, uh, well, the eastern half of our viewing area. Gonzales still some fog and then a lot of very thick fog down there along the, the coastal plain. And uh, dew point temperatures are still very low. That's why temperatures have been on the chilly side starting off. And then yesterday as well as today, we're going to gain 30 degrees because the dry air doesn't hold the heat in very well. And on the flip side, it heats up quite easily. However, these numbers, dew points and therefore the humidity, 
are going to definitely start to come back up. So by tomorrow, uh, when we have these numbers in the mid 50s, can't drop any lower than this. So we're going to be staying about 10 degrees warmer tomorrow morning, and that will continue to go up as far as low temperatures throughout the rest of the week as the humidity continues to uh, pump on in here. And uh, as far as cloud cover, we'll have a lot of uh, low clouds the next couple of days. What you saw there on that uh, model was kind of some of those high clouds, mid and high level moisture around here, but a lot of low morning clouds, then some sunshine in the afternoon tomorrow, as well as on Thursday. Then Friday, uh, low off to the west of us is going to start to throw just a little bits of energy in here. And again, this is not raining everywhere constantly, but just that chance, about a 20% chance for a couple of showers around maybe on Friday. Saturday, same situation, and then going into Sunday as well. And then we'll have another front moving on through here, and that's going to hopefully knock temperatures down a little bit, at least back down to normal readings by the first part of next week. There's that low, which is just going to kind of sit out there to the west of us and throw some of that moisture in here, kind of like what we had last week. And that will, like I said, eventually kind of scooch in a little bit closer and give us that small chance for some rain. 68 today at noon. That's the normal high temperature. And then we're going to be about five above that later on this afternoon. Mostly sunny skies. High temperature tomorrow about the same. A little bit warmer. Low temperatures. Uh, that's where the big difference comes in here the next couple of mornings. And then highs are going to be getting up into the upper 70s and even some low 80s out there. A couple of showers scattered about over the weekend. That's that. Not mm -hmm. like December. Not no. yet. Not yet. Not yet. No. Thank you, Mike. 650 right now, about 47 degrees. His work makes it clear that the holiday season is here. Meet the man behind the window art tomorrow on GMSA. And taking a look outside with live cam. Very beautiful out there, 47 degrees. Nice to look at, but grab a jacket. We'll be right back. We're live at the scene of a very large apartment fire here on the northwest side. These are the Sugar Hill Apartments near I-10 and Callahan. That's the building involved, Building 8 here. Uh, the fire broke out after 5.30 this morning. Firefighters found the flames already through the roof. You can see most of the roof is gone now. The flames are out, but we still have some smoke. One man told me he woke up and saw those massive flames from his window. He then went around banging on doors and waking up his neighbors. Now, so far, we have not heard anything about any injuries, but firefighters have been going around and trying to assess who is out here, who made it out of the building. And so we are waiting for an official word from them on uh, the situation with the residents and also if they know what caused this fire. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thanks for the update, Katrina. I want to remind you of the beards coming off today. A group of the KSAT team, including uh, myself, Justin, uh, Steve, uh, Stephen, uh, a bunch of the guys, going to be heading down to Henley's Barbershop off of Northwest Military this morning. Yes, you as well, and Mike. Mike. Getting <laughs> our <laughs> baby faces back. <laughs> And it's all happening today on GMSA at 9. It's going to be a fun time, but also a time to see how much money you helped us raise over the past month. Very it's funny, cool. out of the corner of my eye, I can see me, Mike, going, well, what about me? Yeah, he was like, hey, I'm over here. I'm <laughs> over here. <laughs> Let's go to Steven for an update. Talking about the baby faces, right? I mean, mine has pretty much stayed the same, but I am happy to support, and I'm happy to see the guys doing so well. Uh, let's take a quick look at the roads before you get your morning started. Right now, we have some shots here that show traffic's been moving pretty smoothly throughout the entire morning, so that's some good news, but taking you right to the map, be on the lookout for this stall, 1604 westbound at Redland Road, still out over there. A jump down over here shows that we do have another stall off I-10 westbound at 35, also seeing a little bit of a stretch of yellow there, so make sure that you're driving carefully out there, but overall, morning's not been too bad. Let's check in with Mike to see what we can expect weather-wise. And got a couple of clouds around here right now. It is definitely chilly. Grab a jacket. We do have a slight bit of a, uh, a wind chill in places. Not much of a breeze out there. And then off to the east, watch out for some of that fog. Uh, visibility is still pretty good, but uh, notice how a little bit's moved in toward San Marcos right now. So watch it around New Braunfels. Keep an eye out around Pleasanton, where we've had some already this morning, and further off to the east. And throughout the day, we are going to make it up to 68 at noon, 73 for a high temperature. December starts on the warm side. Couple yes. of showers maybe this weekend. All right, join us at nine today. Uh, Steph, Stephanie, Serna, Sarah, and Sarah, Sarah, Sarah and Sarah today yes, at nine. Fantastic. So join us then, and goodbye to the beards. Goodbye, <laughs> beards. Beard. Have a great day.